Wendy from Shiny Happy World and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this really cute turtle applique block. It's really simple. This is the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month pattern for August. So it'll be the one that go is available to club members from August 15th through September 14th. It'll be available if you're not in the club and you just want to get a single pattern. Uh, you can, you'll find this one in the shop at Shiny Happy World sometime in October. But for now, he is exclusive to people in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club and you can find that information at Shiny Happy World. So here's how to make him. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is print or trace the pattern onto the paper side of some fusible adhesive. And then you're going to roughly cut out all the pieces and by rough cut I mean cut a little bit extra around all the edges and you want to leave a little extra extra anywhere that there is a dotted line. You're going to fuse all of those pieces to the back side of your fabric and then we're going to cut them out again and the second time you cut it out is when you do what I call a clean cut. So I'm going to pull those in here and show you what I mean. So the reason that you do the clean cut after fusing is so that the adhesive goes all the way up to the cut edge of the fabric. If you tried to cut out the piece, cut out the fabric and then do everything clean cut and then fuse it down and then cut it out again, it just, you would leave some little threads. Even if it's just a thread width there, it's going to uh, tend to fray a little bit. So this is when you do the clean cut of all of the pieces and for that I cut right on any solid lines and you still want to leave a little bit extra anywhere that there's a dotted line and you'll see in a second those are pieces that are going to tuck underneath other pieces. So for our turtle we've got a shell, we've got a head, we've got six spots, four feet, a tail, and two eyes. And now we're going to work on laying those all out. Let me get this out of the way. So I've got a piece of fabric here that's already been quilted to the batting. I wait and put the backing on the quilt as you go method that I use. Uh, you put the batting, the backing on last. So I'm going to start laying these pieces out and I like to start with the main piece. And in this case, that's the shell. So you just peel off that paper backing and I think I'm going to put them over on this side. I'm making a rectangle block in case I decide to use this for a calendar page. So there's, there's our shell off to the side and down. If you just float it up, he's going to tend to look like he's floating in midair. And so without having any adding grass or anything like that, just by putting him down near the bottom of your block, it's going to tend to make him anchor at the bottom. So I'm going to do the head next, but before you peel off the paper, you want to make sure that you've traced the facial features uh, through there. So uh, if you look at this, I usually hold it up to a window and then you can see the drawing through it. And just, I just mark it with a simple black fine tip Sharpie. And if you look closely, you'll see that the eyes are much smaller on this side than the actual eye shapes are. I always trace a little bit to the inside of any shapes that are going to be appliqued on there. That way it gives me a general positioning guide, but I don't have to place it exactly where it goes to make sure that I cover up those lines. So this just gives me a little bit of flexibility. I do draw the mouth directly on the line because I'm going to stitch right over that with black thread and basically cover up that marking line. So make sure that you've traced the face before you take the paper off because once you take the paper off, that guide is gone. Peel that off and that tucks right underneath the shell in the front. And you want to have about a quarter of an inch overlap. It doesn't have to be exact, but roughly a quarter of an inch. So I'm putting this on a uh, rectangular piece, but it will fit in one of my standard um, squares that finish 10 inch square. So this is the tail and just like the head on the front, this tucks behind the back end of the shell. Now I have a bunch of feet I'm going to put in place. 
There are four different feet. I don't have them labeled with numbers or anything. They're not all the same, but it doesn't matter which ones go where. This is a very simple drawing of a turtle, so um, I haven't like scaled the feet or anything like that. I do try and make sure that they all are roughly the same depth, but other than that, I don't worry too much about exactly where they get placed. All of my patterns are really forgiving enough that you can play a little bit. You could change the angle of the head or change the angle of the tail, or you could more evenly space the feet. I'm gonna do two toward the front and two toward the rear, but you could also do more like a child's drawing where they just do kind of four evenly spaced feet at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and put his eyes on there because I really like when you start to see the face come together. These eyes are small enough that if you really don't like stitching around the eyes, they're big enough that you can stitch around them, but if you really don't like that, these are small enough that it would be really easy to paint them uh, using some fabric paints or to use um, fabric markers. And I've got tutorials on Shiny Happy World that shows you how to do that and tells you what some of my favorite products are, that um, things that I've tested for use with uh, quilt blocks. So now again, the spots, just like the feet, I've got six spots, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter which ones go where. So just peel the backings off of all six and then play around with them until you like the way they look. I did take care when I laid these on the fabric, I laid all of them so that the lines of that gingham that I'm using if I hold the oval the long way, the lines are going at angles. So um, that is kind of the one thing that I did really think about as I was laying this down. I did the same thing on the feet. I didn't want that cross hatch line to go straight up and down. So on all of those feet, I positioned it so it makes like X hatches. Let's see, I think I'm gonna put this big one in the middle. This guy more on the side. And one more. I think I'm going to do this one here. Make that one go like that. All right, I like how that looks. So I'm going to take that over to the ironing board. The next step is to fuse it down. So follow the directions on whatever fusible adhesive you're using and fuse that in place. And when we come back, I'm going to, I'm going to stitch all around it and then I'm going to show you how I did all of my outline stitching. And here it is, all finished. So I'm gonna scooch that up so you can see him in the center of the block. So on this one, unfortunately, there's still a lot of stopping and starting, no matter how carefully you plan your stitching, because each of the spots is its own thing. So you're gonna to have to start and stop on each of the spots. But I did manage to do the rest of it without any stopping and starting. So what I did, is I started just, I was went around the shell first and I started just down inside the neck here. So just below the neck edge I started and I went around once. And then on my second pass around is when I stopped and detoured to do the tail and the legs. So I went around a second time, went past the edge of the tail to, so to the bottom edge of the tail and then I went one, two, three. So I came out at that top edge and then went over that little bit an extra time, came around, went across this foot, and then went one, two, three, and then across the top of the foot again. And then same thing on all the feet, go across the top of the foot and then go one, two, three, across the top again and across the next one, one, two, three, and across one, two, three, and then I continued up here. So that was the second time around the shell. And now I went one more time around the shell, which is going to be four times at the tops of each of those, but you can't tell the difference between three and four. So went all the way around there for the third pass around. That finished the shell. Then I went past, just overlapped my the start of my stitching just a little bit, and then went one, two, and three, and tied off. Then I had to do each spot individually, so I ran, went around each of those three times. I only go around the eyes once because it's black, so you can't see the 
the sketchy, scribbly look that I do. And I did go over the mouth three times to get a nice thick line. And on the mouth, I'm really trying to go right on my line of stitches. I don't make that very scribbly. So again, like I mentioned in the, uh, as we were assembling him, these eyes are big enough that you can stitch around. I'll show you so you can see my stitching from the back there. So they are big enough to stitch around, but it is small enough to be a little annoying. So I'm going to put a link to a blog post that has links to all kinds of other tutorials for other eye options. If you have an embroidery machine, there is um, some files, some free embroidery files for satin stitched eyes of different sizes. If you want to use fabric paints, I've got a link to a post that uh, mentions my favorites that I've tested. If you want to use markers, same thing. You can also hand satin stitch the eyes. You can whip stitch them down with felt. You can fuse them down with the ultra hold adhesive that doesn't need to be sewn around. So that one blog post has links to lots and lots of posts with other tutorials for different ways you could handle the eyes. So that is kind of the standard color with the, this is the rainbow brights and a little bit of the gingham play for his spots. But I wanted to show you a couple of other options too for colors before I sign off. So another option is the pink on pink on pink that I've been doing for all of the funny faces blocks. So in this case, it's just a few different pinks from that pretty pinks fabric bundle and he looks super cute or she. Um, and then I've got one more option that I wanted to show you. Um, if you don't want to do the spots, especially, this is a really great pattern for you to use with some novelty fabrics. I don't usually use anything. Usually I stick to tone on tones. So blue on blue, pink on pink, green on green. But this shell is a really great opportunity to use some other kind of fabrics that you have. So I pulled out this really great floral pattern. It's from a couple of years ago from Michael Miller Fabrics, but I thought it made a really cute turtle shell. And then I didn't feel like it needed the spots because the pattern had so much uh, going on in it. So that is another option for this turtle block. So remember, this is the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club pattern for August and into September. And if you're a member of the club, you'll get that automatically. And if you're not a member of the club, it will be in the shop at Shiny Happy World sometime in October. I hope you have fun making them. I'll see you next month. Bye.